concept map is a great way to present all the moving parts in your research project. I recommend using this technique when you start thinking about a new research project all the way through to the end product. And once you submitted your thesis, dissertation or research article, you can use this technique to plan your next project. A concept map shows the different ideas which form part of a research project, as well as the relationships between them. A concept map visually presents concepts as shapes, circles, ovals, triangles or rectangles, and the relationships between those concepts are presented as arrows. Your concept map will show the concept in words inside the shape, and the relationship is then presented in words next to each arrow, as you can see in this example. Don't wait to put your concept map together only until after you have what you consider all the knowledge or have read all the literature. Anyway, with 2 million research articles published each year, when will that day ever come? In the very early stages, when you start thinking about your research project, draw your concept map to get your thoughts organized. Then, as you become more and more abreast with the research out there, modify your concept map. So the process of creating a concept map is an iterative one, and you will find that it feels like you've drawn and redrawn that concept map over and over again. So this process in itself is a learning experience and is vital to sort out those concepts in your own head. So once you have clarity of those concepts in your own head, it's easier to explain your research and what it's all about to anyone else. So in addition, including a concept map into a dissertation, thesis or research article as relevant makes it easier for the reader, including the examiner or the reviewer, to understand your research project. There are several instances in your research journey where a concept map will come in handy. So firstly, when you are conceptualizing your research project, create a concept map to put all the different aspects related to your research topic into, onto paper and to show the relationships between them. This will give you a bird's eye view of all the moving parts associated with your chosen research topic. You will also most probably realize that your topic is too broad and you'll be able to zoom in a bit more to focus your research question better. But before you settle on a specific research question, do a bit of reading around the topic area. Your concept map will help to show you which keywords to search for. You can use a concept map when planning the search strategy for your literature review. Jumping right into those databases to do a search for articles to include in your literature review can really take you down the deepest, darkest rabbit hole. One of those where you find an appropriate article, then get suggested a few related articles, and then you find another few related articles which are related to those related articles. And after four hours, you can't even remember what your actual focus was. So to avoid the situation, draw your concept map first. You can use the concept map you drew when you brainstormed your research topic, and that will give you guidance in terms of which keywords to search for. Planning your search strategy before you jump in will ensure that you remain on the well-lit path. You can also add a concept map to your completed literature review chapter. As you read more and more around your research topic, you'll get a better idea of the relationships between current concepts, and you'll find even more concepts to add to your concept map. Adapt your concept map as you go along, and once you have a final version of your literature review, add your concept map as a figure to your literature review chapter. This will give the reader a good overview of your literature review, and it will make their hearts happy because we all know how nice it is to be rewarded with a picture after reading pages and pages of text. You can also use a concept map to plan your discussion. Once you've completed your data analysis and interpretation, developing a concept map for your discussion will give you clarity on what to include in your discussion chapter or section. You can also add a concept map to your completed research project. Once you have completed the entire research project and you want to show how your findings filled the gap in the literature, you can indicate this by modifying the concept map which you created for your literature review. This is a great way to show how your research findings have added to the existing concepts related to your research topic. And lastly, you can create a concept map to present your own research niche area. And as you create more knowledge 
and more research throughout your research career, you can add that to your concept map. Now, I'm sure there are many ways that you use concept maps in your own research. Please tell us how you use concept maps by leaving a comment in the comment box below this video. Let us look at an example of a concept map which shows the concepts as well as the relationships between them. You can find more examples on the Research Masterminds website. Find a link in the description box below this video. Now the two examples that I'm going to show you do not belong to me and you can find a link to these examples in the description box below this video. Here you can see the central concept of Little Red Riding Hood and her relationship to the wolf where grandma fits in, as well as the other concepts in the story. You can see how the different concepts are all related to one another, and these relationships are shown through arrows. This concept map example shows the concepts related to a cup of coffee, neatly presented in rectangles with the arrows showing the relationships between concepts. You can see that each branch reads like a sentence, such as caffeine inhibits sleep. Now the next question is, how do you go about developing this concept map? I have some practical tips for you to get it done. Go to a place where there are very little distractions, where, which are conducive to letting those creative juices flow freely. Seeing that all of us function differently, I should rather say, go to a place where, which you perceive as having little distractions. It may be in a park, in your garden, at the restaurant, in the library or in your own study. Take out a blank piece of paper and start thinking about your research project. Of course, you can do it on a blank page on your laptop as well. One of my students used sticky notes, with each sticky note presenting a concept and with smaller strips of sticky notes showing the relationships between concepts. You can even get all fancy and use your concept mapping software. But as a start, a blank piece of paper is more than enough. Jot down all the ideas that comes to mind while you answer the following questions. What is your research about? Why is your research important? What gap does your research fill? What problem will your research solve? What influences your research outcome? Just jot down all your thoughts. Then once you have all your thoughts on paper, see if you can identify some relationships between them. What comes before what? What is the consequence of what? What is associated with what? Once you are happy with what you have put together, present it to a friend, preferably at a time when both of you are not in a hurry. At a bar with loud music may bring about some challenges and on a first date is not a good idea at all. Explain what is going on in your concept map. Give your friend a chance to ask some questions and as you explain it to someone else, as well as through fielding your friend's questions, it will start to make more sense to you and you will most probably move some concepts around and add new ones. Repeat this process with someone else when you feel the need for more input. Once you are happy with your rough draft, and if you are planning to feature your concept map in your thesis, dissertation or a research article, now is the time to turn your rough concept map into something more presentable. One can easily get lost when it comes to choosing software to create a concept map. Some of the software out there are paid for, while others give you a free version for some basic concept mapping. Be careful of that software, which only gives you access for 30 days. Remember, you are going to change your concept map quite a few times as times go on. If you prefer to use software which you are already familiar with, why not just do it in PowerPoint or Word? Explore a few options and see what works for you. But be careful, this exploration can take you down a four hour rabbit hole and when a proposal submission deadline is looming, that rabbit hole is a dark place to be in. Go and have fun at creating your concept map for your research project. Enjoy it. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.